Hello, Dr. Cliff Favor here. And for this week, I wanted to talk a little about food allergies. You know, that's something that we, we deal with a lot, you know, and, and there is a lot of confusion. Um, I feel like a lot of groomers think that all skin problems are associated with, with nutrition. And I would say that there are a fair amount, but I don't think it's anywhere close to what most groomers believe it to be on that. And the question is, is it for nutrition or is it actually food allergies? And that's where it gets real confusing with a lot of discussions that go on in some of the, the, the groups there. So poor nutrition, let, let's just address that to start with. Even our worst diets today are probably better than our diets of days gone by, but yet we're seeing more skin problems. So that doesn't always fit the bill on the overall. And I'm gonna say over the years, I've only seen a few diets that I would say that were really uh, uh, not well balanced. Now, when we talk about a diet and an issue, a lot of it has to do with bioavailability. So whatever's in the diet, is it available there? And is it balanced on that? Because if it isn't balanced, it's like building a house with a whole bunch of two by fours with no sheetrock. We don't have the right building blocks. And then a lot of times we get some abnormal skin problems on that. Now, the second part of that is food allergies, where we actually have an allergy to the, 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 the food. Now, a lot of people think that's a high incidence, mainly because a lot of times when a dog goes in and we think it has allergies, the veterinarian changes the food. The reality is that's one of the few things that we have control over on that. But only about 12% of the dogs that have allergies actually have food allergies. Now, when we have food allergies, one of the things that we do is a food trial where we'll actually put them on a special food, either a novel protein or a hydrolyzed protein. Now, realizing the first thing I'm gonna say is if it's a cross-the-counter diet, you're probably wasting your time because most of those are not fixed formula, meaning that they change the, the diet a lot of times on what's cheap on, on the commodities market there. They can change what's in that bag for six months without changing the label on the bag. A lot of these uh, dog foods are made in the same manufacturing plants as the cheap dog foods and the expensive dog foods. So if they're not cleaning their machines before and after, uh, beforehand, a lot of times we're getting the last diets uh, leftovers on that. You know, a lot of people have peanut allergies that you can't even be in a restaurant that has any peanut oil used. Well, the dogs are not that dissimilar. So if we get residue from the, the previous diet, we can have problems on, on that. So if we're gonna do a, a dietary trial, it needs to be uh, usually a, a one that the veterinarians recommended, realizing this is our job. We, we gotta go out there and search out those diets. And hopefully you have a veterinarian that knows about fixed formula, knows about you know the, the, the different aspects of that. The point that I wanted to make today is what we do in the household. You know, a lot of times we go to the veterinarians, we get this expensive hydrolyzed diet where we're paying an astronomical amount of money for it, you know, and then we go home and we screw up. We give them treats, we give them table scraps, we give them beef chews, uh, we give them a heart guard that may have a, a beef flavoring in it. We may give them a supplement that may have um, uh, different animal uh, byproducts or, or whatever in there and we mess up the whole trial. Because you could be 99% good, but the 1% that you're messing up changes the whole picture. And I'm gonna tell you from a veterinarian, that's one of the hardest parts of, of dealing with food allergies because I can't control what happens at home. So when we go on a, a food trial, it's very, very important that we are very religious about everything we do. Nothing is to go into that dog other than that diet without some type of scrutiny on that. Um, now, there's going to be medications that are out there that, that aren't going to be a problem, but a lot of them in our animal world are beef flavored, which beef is one of the highest allergens out there. We have toothpaste that has chicken flavoring because that's what they like. We have toys that, that actually have beef flavoring in it. We have bully sticks, we have the trachs, we have the hooves, we have all these things that you might as well just be feeding them the, the, the beef as well as the cow on that because of the fact that all those things will cause reaction. So if we're on a food trial, religiously, do not give them anything else without talking to the veterinarian. That includes your supplements because supplements also have on that. So hope this helps. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to us 
at info at isbusa.com and we'll be glad to help you. Thank you.